Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. If I may get Detective Riley. Riley, it's going to hand you page 74 of your motion. Yes, I do. Do you have scissors? Uh, no. Or am I right now? The uh, three photocopies that I seized from uh, Fort Jefferson Crossing on June 2nd, 2019. If you could take them out, please. Sir, do you see what's depicted on the screen behind you? Uh, yes. Is that the top half of the document that you see that day? Yes. I would ask at this time if you can stand up and read it, uh, publish it to the jury, please. Sure. Starting at the top line. <laughs> uh, some of the words I can't make up. Okay, if you can, please, if you could start with the uh, Friday, 524, uh, 2019. And on here on the left? And it says 1 a.m. And could you and read what is said right next, what is written right next to 1 a.m.? Uh, I, I really can't make it out, man. Okay, and what about right below 1 a.m.? What is uh, there? It's uh, 6 o'clock. 
and then J. Michelle uh, D. E. P. T. with her. Uh, and below that, 6.40, wake up, alarm, and then took shower together, dress, jeans, lucky, plus blue shirt, uh, coffee and cereal, uh, brought computer to office. And over here on the right, far side, what does that say? It's like a Mishi... I can't make up this word. Uh, doing juice bulk. And underneath that, please, starting with the next uh, line. This is seven office, uh, seven fifteen Kent, seven thirty uh, Mishi left, eight twenty seven uh, Andrea call spoke briefly. Uh, I can't make up this mark here. Mishi back, office, and kitchen. And it's, uh, it's like 8.50, Kent left. It's a nine. And then we're uh, 10. Work on reviewing I uh, can't make out this uh, word here, but it's uh, uh, specification. And, and budget, Mishi and Andy covered our uh, drafts. Uh, continuing over to this, this side. Uh, Looks like either eight o'clock or nine. Uh, can't make up that uh, word called and Nishi took. Uh, can't make that out either. To Hutch and Aquas supermarket. Your Honor, um, if the witness cannot read something, I, I this it's obviously it's whoever's handwriting it is, to have this witness interpret it is misreading what the document is, and I'm not sure him reading it is making it any clearer, if not more obscure, by misstating words that at least I think I know what they are. So I have to object to this procedure. If it was a clear document, it's one thing. If it's clarified by someone who knows what's on the document, that's, that's, that's one thing as well. But to have this witness read things. If he said he did not, he couldn't make it out, then I'd be fine. But he's reading something, saying it out loud, and it's not correct. How do I cross-examine on that since I don't, this is not my client's handwriting. So. Well, well, first, the comment that this is not my client's handwriting, that's not the case. Well, that's the case. Well, that's the case. Well, well, I, if I can, Your Honor, I'm sorry. I apologize, Your Honor. Just because this witness cannot read every word does not mean that there is no juror who can read the word. Written in cursive or somewhat in cursive, some jurors may be able to read it better than the detective writer. So the objection is over. If you can continue, sir. Uh, so, left off here, 10.30, 10.45, left for, uh, again, can't make up these two words, <coughs> 12, uh, over here, uh, about 10, oh, uh, I read that already. Uh, so 12 o'clock, lunch. Uh, can't make up that word. Del Pepe, together. Uh, can't make that out. Mishi, one, computer. 
sent an email to Michelle Hogue, 125, sent email to Jennifer, 124, uh, under two, 585 Deercliff, Avon, called Mishi. Uh, I can now make up this time here. Can I'm gonna move it up. Um, 88 MS measured tree line. Called Mishi three times, 3.15 to 4 p.m. I cannot make out these uh, two lines here. Uh, same, same goes with this. Uh, about clients visiting on Saturday. Um, spoke to her. Uh, can't make that out and went for. Can't make out the rest of this line here. 515 call Mishi. Uh, 430 Pavel. Uh, five back in house. Six, 641. Emailed. Uh, can't make out that. From phone. Seven. Uh, West Hartford Starbucks. Two frappuccino. Two frappuccinos. I did not like. Uh, can I make that out? I'm gonna move it up. Uh, eight. Uh, officer at eight fifteen. Uh, call Lauren. Call officer. Uh, can I make that out? Texted, uh, cannot uh, read that. 824, nine, 845, left for Ethel Walker, expected with Mishi. And I can't make out these two words there. 10, uh, 945, back in house, dinner by, by myself in front of TV. 11, texted Lauren. And at the bottom of the page, sir, is that cut off? Uh, yes, it is. Is this the original document? Uh, this is a photocopy. This is what you found out of that bag that day? Yes. One of the pages? Correct. Start at the top, sir. Sure. Uh, phone calls. Nicole incoming 1259. 16 seconds thunderstorm. Uh, it's like Manny incoming 802, two minutes. Outgoing 802, five seconds. Outgoing 745, 16 minutes. And that's uh, had to, B E T U, outgoing, 841, 25 seconds, outgoing, 838, 59 seconds. Danny canceled, 853. Uh, Pappy canceled, 854. Uh, Bruja canceled, 855. Danny outgoing, 916, 16 minutes. Uh, Petu, outgoing, 9.38, two minutes. Uh, Rugs, outgoing, 11.52, uh, 38 seconds. Spoke with Barbara. Oh, here, I'll move it over. Uh, she didn't know where Rugs were. And then here, Nicole FaceTime, incoming, 11.53, two minutes. Uh, Otis, incoming, 1.53, uh, 23 seconds. 
Nicole, FaceTime, incoming, 239, one minute. Fotis, outgoing, 357, two seconds. Uh, incoming, 335, 36 seconds. Incoming, 316, one minute. Uh, Poppy, incoming, 426, 21 seconds. Rugs, incoming, 426, one minute. Fotis incoming, 516, 47 seconds. Bruja incoming, 526, 13 minutes. And then uh, Petu, outgoing, 707, three minutes. Outgoing, 558, 18 seconds. Poppy incoming, uh, I can't make out that uh, number there, 39, one minute. Bruja, Miss Call, 826. Nicole, incoming, 815. Um, 6.40, alarm, woke up and went to room, took shower with Fotis, black leggings, black Adidas, black sweater, uh, seven, it's like either zero or uh, 10 or uh, seven o'clock. Uh, made juice for Nicole and kids off to school. Made scrambled eggs for Nicole. 720, took Nicole to school. 812, back home. 830, uh, cook an omelet. Nine o'clock, went to take bag of, uh, can't make up that word, to warehouse. Uh, can't read that. Hutch and secretary. 9.30, stop and shop. 10.30, back home with grocery. 11 o'clock, went to a pet shoe shop to say bye. Uh, 11.30, went to pond to ski. And no one there to pull me. Oh, pull me, sorry. Uh, 12 o'clock, had lunch. Uh, two photos, pastel to pop up. Uh, one, uh, one o'clock, one o'clock, three o'clock, home. Three thirty, went with cleaning supply to eight m. Uh, back and forth. Four thirty, Pablo came. Five ten, drove to pick up rugs and drove back too late to pick up closes. At 5.30, spoke with Barbara. Thank you, sir. If you can, please put him back. Thank you. Sir, I'm going to draw your attention. Actually, may I have one moment? I'm going to go back to state 71. <coughs> and file for Jeff, for Jefferson. Just read, sir. Was that what was contained on 158? Yes. One sixty-three. Did you seize that item as an exhibit as well? Yes, I did. Why uh, did you do that? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Why? Um, because it was uh, very similar to the item that I found in the mud room. If I may approach, Your Honor. Yeah. 
Where was that item? Uh, what area of the house before Jefferson Crossing was that item found in? In the office, in on uh, that center uh, glass table. Who found it? Uh, Detective Pearson. Did you see it like as it is displayed in the photograph? I'm sorry, 21 off of. Jefferson, Jefferson on state 71? Yes, I'm the one who placed the numbers there. If you could take a look at the item in front of you, sir. What is that? Uh, this is the evidence packaging for the item depicted on the screen. How do you know? Uh, because it is uh, labeled as such. And also these are my initials on the back. Did you place the item inside the packaging? Yes, I did. We would offer it. I'm sorry, what exhibit number is it? Uh, one six, oh, I'm 75. sorry. Uh, state would offer state 75, Your Honor. Can I just look at the envelope again? I have no objection. State 75 is good at it. Do you still have your gloves and your scissors, sir? Yes. Would you mind please opening that? Sorry, did you look inside that envelope? Yes, I did. What is contained therein? It's uh, the piece of paper I see is uh, Exhibit 163. If you could take it out, please. Your Honor, if I may, this is only one publish. Draw your attention again to the screen behind you. No, sir, with respect to this page, if I can, <coughs> if you could take a look, please, as you just read from the other uh, document. Is this the same page? Uh, it's similar, man. There's, uh, there's apparently uh, some additional writing on it. There is additional writing on this page? Yes. Where is that? Uh, mostly on the right-hand side of the uh, paper. If I may approach, Your Honor. If you could please hold it up and just indicate where the additional writing is. So it appears uh, this is uh, this is different than the previous exhibit, and also uh, this this bottom is not cut off. That page has three hole punches on the side. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Is that a photocopy? Uh, no, this appears to be a, a handwritten note. If I may, uh, <coughs> I'm going to draw your attention to the screen, sir. If you could just read the additional writing that is different from the other item that you just read, please. Uh, so this is Pavel texted with, I uh, can't make that out, 212. 
Texapavel 213, Texapavel 224, uh, I can't read that. Called Pavel 338, Pavel called at 440, I guess I can't make up the last digit uh, with the asterisk. And then 1 a.m., officer called from NC, called them back. So with respect to the document you just read off of the screen and this one, the only difference would be this part over here with respect to these writings about Pavel. Uh, it appears to be. As well as the bottom is not cut off. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Did the other document have a backside? Uh, no, they were uh, one-sided photocopies. Is there something on the back of this side? Yes, ma'am. Sir, if you will, if you can read what's contained on that document. It says uh, Saturday, 5. I uh, really can't make out uh, that date clearly. Uh, 2019, 5.38 a.m. Uh, woke up, text. Uh, can't make out that name clearly. Uh, can make this out. PD, 2.30. 5.30 a.m. Um, can't make out this. That's uh, okay. Car parked. Uh, policeman. Um, this, this number is uh, difficult to make out, clearly. Met with. Uh, can't make this out. Uh, neither uh, with this time. Patent from NCPD, Rose, uh, APPR 1015, Mian, uh, 1050, actually these, these minutes are difficult to make out too. Text Jacob, uh, you have the 203 phone number here. Um, again, the, uh, the minutes, uh, this time, uh, or not clear, text Jacob, 1215 left Farmington, 145 Starbucks with Jacob. And on the bottom, sir? Uh, asterisk drove three, uh, can't really read this clearly, Mishi, Cherokee, Fotis, Sub, Pavo, Raptor, uh, dropped Suburban and went back with Raptor. Uh, that's not clear. Um, picked up Tacoma, uh, 585 DC, left Tacoma, drove Raptor back here. Uh, can't make out that. Tried to start bike, uh, no start. Uh, this was a, appeared to be at a dirt bike. Gave him jump start box. Thank you, sir. If you wouldn't mind putting that back into the envelope. the kitchen area of Fort Jefferson Crossing? Uh, yes. Yes, can you? <clears throat> Thank you. If I may approach the clerk, Your Honor. Yes.
you with the mark of seat 76. I don't believe there's an objection, Your Honor. If I may inquire Detective Riley to open that item, please. Is there an objection? No objection. State 76, admitted as a full exhibit. If you can, take it out of the package, sir. Sir, what is that item? This is the, uh, the box of trash bags that I see uh, from the kitchen at Fort Jefferson. The one contained on the photograph, which is state 17A out of uh, state 71? Yes. Thank you. If you can put it back in the box, Your Honor, the state has nothing further with Detective Riley. So I may just approach him without the item. Thank you. Good afternoon again, sir. Good afternoon. I'm going to start with that last um, exhibit that we were shown here at 76. <clears throat> now, we just saw the picture, and um, the bags were, were uh, in the photograph. Dr. Becker, stick that, right? Uh, yes. So, did you roll them back up in here? Uh, I don't remember, sir. Because this, the way the, you just displayed it isn't how it is in the picture, right? That's correct. So when it, you found this in, or you said someone else found it in the cabinet and put it on the countertop, right? Uh, or it was myself, sir. I don't remember. Okay, fair enough. But was it open like this? It was not like it is there, sir. Okay, so was a bag um, coming out? Uh, yes. Right, and I just want to hold it on an angle. So these are the way the bags were in there. If you pull one out, um, you got to sort of, they're in a roll, are they, are they not? Uh, they appear to be, yes. So in order to, if you pull it out, you got to sort of put your hand in there to stop them all from rolling out, right? I don't want to do it here for the jury, but am I correct? Um, a, it's a roll, right? Yes, it's a roll. So someone so that you don't recall whether or not when you found the box was it on its side or was it lying on, on its bottom? Do you recall? I don't remember, sir. But in any event, the photograph shows it coming the box the, the garbage bag coming out, right? Yes. And here when we just looked at it, it was shoved back in with the top sort of closed, right? 
Yes. You are not making any representation that these uh, black garbage bags are identical to any of the other garbage bags that were seized from anywhere at their locations during the course of your job as the evidence officer, are you? No. Did you send these bags on to be tested at the state lab for anything? Fingerprints, anything like that? DNA? I, I personally did not. And um, if I could just have exhibit 75, please. Now, exhibit 75 is this, uh, writ this handwritten document on, um, there's a purple um, end on, on this document, sort of a, on the edge. It's kind of a pink purple color, right? Yes. And it's got, it's a lined paper with um, pink on it, right? Yes. And there's holes punched in it too, correct? Correct. So do you know where this came out of? Did you find where this document came out of? Uh, no. And you didn't know who wrote this document, do you? No. Now I note that when you read it, um, on the back you also noted, and I, I'm not gonna put it back up on the, on the Elmo here because I'm just gonna mention you read what you could off it, right? Yes. It's handwritten by somebody, right? Yes. You did read the name uh, Rose. Do you remember that? Yes. Now, did you know there, of, a, of an attorney, Michael Rose, who was connected to, to Mr. Doulos? I don't know who, who or what Rose refers to. OK. Did you know there was an attorney, Meehan, associated with attorney, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Doulos? No. How about a, attorney, Jacob Pytranker? Was that somebody that you knew is connected at this at the time of this collection by uh, at some association with Mr. Dumas? No. Or did you check the phone? There's a phone number on here, right? Yes. Did you check whose phone number that was? I did not. Now, unlike some of the items we've seen that have all this um, fingerprint dust on it, once you put that black powder on it, or gray powder, it stays on there, right? Uh, pretty much. So I'm noticing this document seems to not have that on there. So I take it you didn't test it for fingerprints at all? Did I, I did not process it for fingerprints, no. Okay. Let me just then ask you some questions about some of your testimony this morning. So one of the things you testified about was uh, the Ford Raptor. That's correct, right? Yes. And the pictures that we saw of the Ford Raptor were either in a garage, garage of the state police uh, headquarters or in a lot of the state police headquarters up in Litchfield, right? Yes. That um, Raptor was taken there by some kind of towing uh, platform truck, correct? Correct. And that was uh, taken, I believe, on, was it um, May 31st, 2019? I'm not sure, sir. The first time you saw it, though, was, you said, on June 2nd? No, the Raptor I first saw on May 31st. You did see it on May 31st, at, up in Litchfield? Yes. So you don't know whether or not that was the same day that it was actually uh, brought up to Litchfield? Uh, I don't think it was. I think it was brought the day before. On the on the thirtieth? Uh, possibly. You sure it wasn't early in the morning of the thirty-first? I can't say for sure, sir. Well, let me ask you a different question. See, it might refresh your recollection. You were asking questions about trash at um, eighty Mountain Spring Road, right? Yes. And that's in Farmington, correct? Uh, yes, it is. And so is Fort Jefferson Crossing in Farmington, right? Yes. So you were aware that garbage pickup in that area of Farmington was on a Friday morning, right? I was unaware of that. You were unaware of that? All yes. Because right, I was trying to just see if that might refresh your recollection as to the day this truck was 
brought up to Litchfield? You don't know. Is what you're no, I don't know. Okay, fair enough. You know that someone brought it up there, and it was there when you got there. Fair enough? That's correct. All right. And uh, you inventoried the, um, that vehicle, correct? Yes. And you only see certain items, right? Uh, from the Raptor, yes. And the rest you just put back in the Raptor? Yes. And I noticed that in the, um, uh, I could call up the image, but correct me if I'm wrong, there was a, um, in one of the items that was in the rear of the, I just have a moment, I don't want to ask the wrong question. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I'm referring to the right vehicle, please. Let me just ask you, so I don't waste some piece of my time looking for it. There was a picture of a license plate in uh, one of the uh, photographs that was among the items that was inside the interior of the vehicle. Was that in the Ford Raptor, or was that in the Jeep? Uh, I'm not sure without actually looking at the picture, sir. All right, but you recall there was a license, Connecticut license plate, Y10, Y, I mean, sorry, 910 YFC, remember that? I don't remember the plate number, but I do remember seeing it on the inventory. Was that license plate seized for any reason? Uh, no, it wasn't. How about the uh, license plate AK25389, which was in the uh, rear area of the Jeep Cherokee? No, we did not seize that. Did you check out the plate to see what it went to? Uh, I don't remember if we did uh, that day, but I didn't. I did not run that plate. And, and just so that I'm, I'm also clear, um, other than the gloves and the hat, you didn't seize anything else in the Ford Raptor, correct? Uh, we did seize uh, swappings. Oh, fair. I'm talking about items that were actually physically that we saw these pictures. You didn't seize any of those items, right? Uh, I don't believe so, sir. All right. And the same thing with the um, Jeep Cherokee. We saw these pictures of cable, like electric cable and tools and whatnot that were in the Jeep Cherokee folder. You didn't seize any of those items, right? Uh, we didn't seize anything out of the, out of the Jeep. You took it out, you laid it out, right? Yes. You took pictures of it, and you put it back in. Right? Yes. So, as far as you can, as far as you know, it had nothing to do with your investigation. Uh, not at that time, no. No. If I understand, you were just trying to be thorough, right? Look at everything. Right? Yes. And the same thing with the um, suburban. As far as the items that were in the Suburban, nothing was seized, right? Uh, that, again, we, we can talk about, you did some swabbing, right? Right, and we did seize the, uh, that rear uh, WeatherTech liner from the cargo area. Oh, you took the WeatherTech liner and then sent that out to be tested, right? Well, that was the intent. I don't know if it actually went up to the lab or not. Okay, and that was a kind of a stiff WeatherTech thing, right? Yes. It didn't curve or roll up easily, did it? Uh, not easily, but I rolled it up. It was very difficult to do, right? Yes.
I'm going to talk a little bit then about, let me just make sure I don't have any other questions about the Raptor, there was a Cherokee, the Suburban. What year was that Suburban? Do you recall? It's uh, 2015, sir. All right, so we're not confusing this with a Suburban that was uh, belonged to Jennifer Dulos down in New Canaan, right? Right. Different vehicle. Different vehicle. And you went to... Um, 585 Deercliff in Avon, correct? Yes. You took some pictures around that kind of a rundown house? Yes. Looks like it hadn't been worked on. Even though it was a for sale sign out front, it doesn't look like it was in any condition to be shown as a as a for sale real estate. Oh, um, that's that's fair. Okay. And then you indicated there was a we saw some pictures of a of a Porsche Cayenne in the what looked like the garage, but it was like covered in all sorts of debris and, and building supplies, correct? Yes. Surrounding it? And it was smashed up, right? Uh, yes. You, I think damaged. we saw the windshield was crashed, like the windshield was, was, had an impact type um, shatter in the front. Yes. And the front was all damaged and banged in. Uh, I don't remember the front or exactly where the damage was. But you indicated that um, the front seats of the Cayenne were missing, right? Uh, or somebody had removed them, yes. Okay, so there were the back seat, right? Yes. But no front seat, right? Yes. And did it look like this vehicle had not been driven in a very long time? Uh, that's what it appeared to be. Yeah. Covered in dust and, and it was open too. Or it, no, you opened the garage, right? Yes. But it co was covered in dust, dirt? Uh, Yes, it had been, like been maintained recently. It had been there a while. Did not appear to be, right? Right. Now, you also, um, <clears throat> let's talk now then about the houses that you actually spent a little time in. Let's start with 80 Mountain Spring Road. That house, we saw some pictures of 80 Mountain Spring, but that wasn't pictures of the whole house, was it? No. This was a house with what, um, five or more bedrooms? It, it was a very large house, sir. Remember if it was about 11,000 square foot house? Uh, I'm not sure the exact, the exact number, the exact square footage. And but it had four garage bays, right? Yes. And in addition to the bedrooms, there were, um, let's see. There were at least five full baths in that house, weren't there? Uh, I don't remember the exact number. There, there were a few. So, but if you don't know about the full baths, weren't there at least another three half baths? Like I said, I'm not well, uh, sure certain, of the number of bathrooms. I didn't mean to interrupt. Could you say that again? No, I'm not sure of the number of bathrooms that it was equipped with. I assume, however, as part of your going through the house, that you went through every room of that house, right? Yes. I won't use the term leaving no stone unturned, but is it fair to say you looked in each room, each uh, part of the room, and someone took pictures of every room, correct? Yes, correct. And so what we've seen today is only a fraction of the space on 80 Mountains Spring Road, correct? That's fair. And did you look at things in the bathrooms, even if you don't remember the number? Uh, I did, yes. You checked to see if there was anything on any faucets, right? Yes. Stains of any sort, right? Yes. You checked the drains as well, didn't you? Uh, as they came in the, you know, the, the tops of the drains at the bottom of the Yeah. Uh, Did you spray basins. anything in any of these bathrooms? Uh, uh, no. No. You would make an, a visual observation first, right? Yes. Now, you testified that there was a, you remember that large, for sale sign close to the house, right? Or something similar to that one, right? It was sort of an oval shape, looked almost like a um, one of those comic strip thought balloons, kind of a, a oval shaped thing that in front of the house, right? Yes, sir. Not the usual, you were also shown a picture, a Google picture that showed what looked like a real estate for sale sign, but the sign was missing, just the post was there, right? Yes. And were you made aware that this was a house for sale? 
Uh, that was my understanding, yes. And that there had been showings, real estate showings at the house during that time period? Uh, yes. Did anyone come by to look at the house while you folks were all in there doing your stuff? Uh, if they did, they just kept driving. Okay. And they didn't stop in. Because you, you didn't just come with the van, right? You came with your individual uh, designated uh, vehicles as well, right? Correct. And so that I'm also clear, when we, we talk about 80 Mountain Spring, you didn't just go through the, uh, the bedrooms and the kitchen, right, and the bathrooms. You went through the garages, right? Yes. And you indicated that when you were in the garage, did you look at the floor? Did you see if there was anything that looked suspicious or that might be, as you put it, of evidentiary value? Uh, yes. Did you find any spots that you looked at closely? Did you use a flashlight or anything to sort of examine the floor of, of this uh, garage? Yes. And did you take any swipes from the garage? Uh, not evidentiary samples, no. Okay. And you said that you looked inside the, um, the garbage and recycling. Well, there was a garbage bit hailed down at the bottom of the street, right? Yes. And this was, you were there on... I think you said the second, right? That would be a Sunday? It was Sunday. This is Memorial Day weekend, right? Yes. Oh, and no, it's the weekend after Memorial Day weekend. The weekend after, right, after Memorial Day weekend. I'm sorry, I misspoke. But on, the, on Sunday, the trash barrel was still out by the street, correct? Yes. And does that help refresh your recollection of what day trash collection was in that part of the Objection, Your Honor. Well, the trash barrel can be out any day of the week. So it, well, the objection is not clear, but it doesn't clarify the, or enhance the memory as this court hears it. You can ask the question, counsel, but it does, just because the trash barrel is out does not mean it's going to be picked up the next day. So. Did you notice whether anyone else still had their bar had their barrel out on that uh, Sunday? Objection. Relevance. Um, well, the effort is to try to determine whether the next day was trash day. Overruled. Uh, I didn't take any note of uh, trash barrels. Right. Now, you did talk about the recycling barrel, right? Uh, yes. And you opened that up, right? Correct. And you mentioned some of the items that were in there, correct? Yes. You said you saw a coffee cup, a used coffee cup in there, right? Yes. Now, was that one of these styrofoam cups, or was it a, like a ceramic coffee mug? I remember it to be a uh, disposable cup. Did it have a logo like Dunkin' or Starbucks on it? Uh, not that I remember, sir. Do you remember anything about it at all? Uh, just that I took a look at it and looked for any, uh, you know, blood-like stains or any something like along those lines. Did you physically pick it up and look at it? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. And did you see any stains on it? Uh, I did not. Did it look like it had coffee in it? Yeah, at one point, sir. So there was some stain in it. Um, yes. Could you smell coffee in it? Uh, I don't remember smelling it. You don't remember smelling anything in it, right? Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Objection, yeah, I that wasn't the testimony. I think it was the testimony. It, well, the court heard, I don't remember smelling it. Oh, okay. is that what you meant by that? You don't remember smelling it, or you don't remember smelling anything? No, I don't remember going through the steps and <clears throat> smelling it to find out what was in it. All right, and you didn't take fingerprints on it? No. And you didn't take a picture of it? Uh, no, I did not. For you did not time. have anybody take a picture of it, mm -hmm. right? No. And none of those yellow placards that you use for exhibits, state police exhibits, you didn't put those next to it at all, right? No, we did not. So you just left that and went and moved on to other examination, right? Yes. And were there any stains on the floor of the at 80 Mountain Spring that... Uh, Drew, drew your attention? On the garage floor, sir? On the garage floor, yes. Uh, yes, there were a couple areas. And tell us, tell the jury what you did with regard to those uh, 
areas? Uh, we field tested those with uh, the presumptive Castlemeyer test. And they came back negative? Negative, correct. How about in the, uh, you said it was gravel driveway? Yes. Did you do anything similar in the driveway? Uh, we looked at the gravel driveway closely and found uh, no, no such areas of staining. You were looking for some kind of, let, let's be clear, something red or brown type uh, staining? Something that would appear to me to be possibly blood. Not dirt or mud or anything like that? No. So let me just ask you a couple of questions. Then we'll call up a couple of pictures from... Um, I'll just note for the record the delay, Your Honors, I don't have the AV guy to help, so I'm an IT person, so I'm doing my own IT work. I apologize for the delay. So, um, this is a um, photo second here. This is photo two from, if you'll just look, you have it in front of you there, right? Yes, sir. All right. This is from the street, uh, Mountain Spring Road, correct? Yes. And as we're looking at this image, we're facing Mountain Spring Road in a north direction, right? Yes. And we can see the house that you're referring to is here set back. Is that right? Yes. And as I understand, you said this was a Google Earth uh, street view picture. It wasn't one taken by the state police, right? Correct. But if we go to the pictures that were taken that day, and all of these were taken the same day you were there, right? Are you not? Uh, yes. You were asked about this pink, um, you said it was like uh, pink surveyor's tape, is that right? Uh, that's how I would describe it, yes. And you, I think you also said to protect the driveway so people didn't uh, park on the grass. Is that a, how you referred to it before? That's what it appeared to me. Too, right. uh, and, and in fact, if this house was for sale, um, you wouldn't want prospective home buyers to be parking over this nice lawn, would you? Uh, correct. Right. And, and you weren't sure if that was the sign, but if we get up close, this again, this is picture three, um, can you tell us what this sign says, even though it was from the back, it was photographed, this isn't reversed, but can you tell us what this picture shows? Yeah, it says uh, Ford Group. And it was a large, you know, advertising sign for the sale of this home, right? Yes. And you said the driveway itself was made out of gravel. Is that right? Uh, yeah, compacted crushed stone. And the spots that you see here, um, you indicated you looked for some kind of staining that might be of evidentiary value. And if you look in the driveway, you see there are some spots, right, at the time. But were you able to determine what those were? Uh, no. But in any event, they did not appear to you to be similar to anything that you had collected that might be of evidence you got, correct? Right. Now I'm going to just um, I'm 
I'm going to jump down to um, picture 15 from the 80 Mountain Spring MSR folder. You testified that this was the area where the septic system was located, correct? Uh, part of the septic system, yes, sir. Well, since I own a house with a sewer, let me just see if I can sewer line. Let me see if I can recall. The septic system has like a, a tank, and it has leaching fields, right? Yes. So when you say part of a septic system, there's only usually, if it's built right, there's only one access point to access the tank, right? Uh, in normal cases, what I'm familiar with, yes. Not in this case, however. Okay. In this case, was there more than one opening to get into a septic uh, area? Uh, that I don't know. I just know of this one. Well, you went, you, let's, let's first of all be clear. If you look at the left-hand side of this image, you're saying these were in-ground propane gas tanks, right? Uh, yes. So you determined that there, that there was a gas line that ran from those tanks to the house? Yes. Okay. As far as where we looked, where you opened up the, um, well, the next picture, right? This is the cap on top of the septic system, right? Uh, on top of that one particular tank. Okay. Did you see another one on the property when you were there? Uh, no. However, sometimes those are buried. Oh, okay. But the, fair enough. Um, but as far as the access point, you looked at the acreage, you looked around the, the yard, right? Uh, yes. And this was the only access point you could find for a septic system, right? And I'm looking at image 16. Uh, yes. And then you, um, did you yourself open up the, I see there's a whole bunch of bolts around the edge here. Did you open those yourself and peer down in there? I did. And I see that there's water down there. Right? Correct. Maybe some other stuff that we don't need to mention, right? Stuff down there? I think that was just gray water. Okay. Well, did you have a truck come and do any kind of pumping to see what was in there? I believe on the second, uh, Farmington Fire Department came and, and pumped it out. Oh, so were you there? On, you said on the second. That was the day you were there, right? Yes. So the Farmington Fire Department came and pumped out the tank, right? Uh, yes. Now it looks like there's um, a ladder down into that tank. Do you see that in this image? Yes. I take it, you're smiling, I take it you are not the person who went down that ladder, are you? Uh, no, I was not. Did anybody in your presence do that? Not that I know of. Once they pumped it out, was it empty? Uh, I don't recall, sir. You were, you were able to to view whatever you needed to view in this tank, right? Uh, the top portion, yes. Okay. But again, there was nothing of evidentiary value found in opening this uh, tank, correct? No. Now, you also walked around the entire property, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Others did, correct? Yes. And there were dogs brought in? Correct. They checked the whole property? Uh, it's my belief, yes. It's my understanding also that uh, somebody came with a, some kind of ground detector, see if there are any disturbed areas of ground, correct? Uh, that was at a later date. Late, but, oh, that was at a later date, it wasn't at this time? No. Okay. And I just want to... Um, Go back for a second to um, the garage, which is where I, these, this line of questions started. Um, this is the blue barrel you talked about in picture 19, correct? Yes. And, and you said the coffee cup was inside there, right? Uh, yes. And this item that's next to it, what is this here? That is a uh, backpack blower. I'm sorry, a what? Uh, like a leaf blower. A leaf blower. Right. Okay. Like a gasoline Powered one or was it electric? Do you know? Uh, from what I remember, was it a, a, a gas powered? And then I see there's some kind of a bottle and some uh, red, looks like red tape or pink tape here. You see that? Yes. 
So let me ask you first about this paint tape. Did you seize that? Uh, no. Was this similar to what you saw along the driveway that they were using to block it so nobody would park off the driveway? It appears to be similar, yes. Um, and this is some kind of um, engine oil, it appeared to you to be? Uh, it appears to be, yes. Did you do anything with that while you were there? No. And again, if we look now at, at photograph 20 in the Mountain Spring folder, was there any portion of this um, surface of the garage floor that you tested either with KM or Luminol or any other uh, reagents or um, sprays? I remember testing a couple areas on the garage floor. Came back negative, right? Negative, correct. Take it then, sir, that you would not say that your team's search of this house, which took, you said, eight hours? Uh, approximately, yes. It was not a cursory search, was it? No. It was very thorough, correct? Yes. You looked at everything in that house? Yes. Every area of the house? Uh, yes. You were looking for even small items that might be of evidentiary value, correct? Correct. So let's talk about Fort Jefferson Crossing first. Now that house, you went, you were there on June third, correct? Uh, the second, I believe. Well, weren't you in this house on the second? That is when I say eighty Mountain Spring. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes, the third. So it was the next day. Right? Yes. So if you were in eighty Mountain Spring, just for the record, if you were in there on the second. A day later, the third is when you were at Fort Jefferson Crossing, right? That's correct. Okay. And you were aware that the house had been already in the possession of state police, had seized it and blocked it off as of the Friday the 31st, right? Uh, I, I know we had held it for a, a day or two. All right. And you knew that there were state police guarding it around the clock before you got there, right? Yes. Were you aware as to whether dogs had already searched that property? Uh, I was not aware of that. Were you aware of what, who, or which state police officers, if any, had already been in the house between the time you arrived, between the time it was, it was uh, seized and the time you went in on the third? Objection. Assumes facts, not in evidence. It's basically calling for hearsay. Well, the question is, or the questions are, were you aware that uh, the premises had been secured before you were there. And the next question was, uh, are you aware that the premises had been secured around the clock? And the third question is, the court heard it. Uh, do you know which officers were there from the state police? And the objection is? Objection is, assumes facts not in evidence. It calls for hearsay and calls for speculation. Overruled. I don't know for certain, sir. <clears throat> Were you working in conjunction with the Western District Major Crime Squad at that time? Uh, yes. We Were they were already involved in this investigation? Uh, yes, I was actually part of that squad. So you knew that they had been there at least since the 31st, right? Uh, I'm not sure exactly when they uh, locked down the house, sir. Fair enough. You were aware they were there before the 3rd? Yes. OK. <coughs> now, you went through the home at Fort Jefferson Crossing as well, didn't you? Yes. And we're talking about a house that was, as I started to get into before I changed subjects, 
you said it was somewhat larger even than the house at 80 Mountain Spring, right? Uh, I didn't say that, but they were similar size. Right. Would it be fair to say it was closer to 15,000 square feet? I'm not a good judge of square footage. At four garage bays? Uh, four garage doors, sir. Four garage doors, right. if I, fair enough. So each door, there was a place for four, at least four cars, right? You could maybe even double them up if you wanted to, right? Uh, yes. It was a very large garage space, right? Yes. And you were shown a bunch of pictures of the, uh, Tony showing on what we will probably do right now. Yes. Is take the afternoon recess until 345. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're taking a late recess today because uh, we came in a few minutes late. So we will resume the session at 345. Please do not discuss the floor.
Good afternoon, please be seated. We can bring the jury out, please. Council stipulate, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we resume with cross ex examination. Thank you, <coughs> uh, Mr. Riley. I, I wanted to just show you a couple of pictures of the um, house at Port Jefferson Crossing, which is sort of where we were. This is the uh, image that you talked about. Um, is the portico that separated the the right side of the garage, well, shall we say the left side of the garage <coughs> or the right side of the garage, this picture being from the rear, correct? Yes. You indicated in your testimony before that the office of Ford Group was above this portion, that is from this image 10, above the left side of the garage, correct? Um. I believe that's only part of the office. That, that was what I was going to get to. Yes. In fact, the whole area, including the area above the right-hand garage uh, doors, was part of the office, correct? Uh, I believe so, yes. It was a very, lar a very large office in a very large house. Is that <clears throat> fair to say? Yes. And when you went through the, um, the, the uh, house, what, where did you start? Do you recall? Um, I don't remember, sir. I, I uh, the first thing that I remember searching was the kitchen. By the way, do you remember there was a, a cat in the house as well? Uh, I don't recall, sir. You remember there was kitty litter in a box in various places as well? Uh, again, I, I don't remember. <clears throat> Nobody was feeding the cat to your recollection. Objection. Well, he said he did not remember that there was a cat at all. And so the question about feeding the cat would not make sense. All right. Fair enough. I'll withdraw the question. The team that you were with searching was approximately, I think you named uh, six or seven people, right? Uh, yes. You were there the whole time, right? Yes, I was. And they were there the whole time, right? Uh, yes. And they were all part of the evidentiary services unit with the van, correct? Uh, yes. Did you have any extra people come in to help? Uh, I don't remember, sir. During that day? Uh, yes, again. <clears throat> I don't remember people uh, specifically coming in to assist us. <coughs> When you um, went into the office area, I just want to show you a couple of pictures from that you were shown before. <coughs> I'm going to go to, um, I guess it's 20 in this folder. And you indicated that this was part of the office, is that right? Yes. And if you look at this image here, there are windows in the uh, side of, the, of this wall here, correct? Yes. And we see trees outside that window, right? Yes. Were there also windows on the other side, that is the side we can't see in this image? Uh, yes, there were. And then there's an area, if you'll see behind this chair right here, that had like another room right there. Do you see that area I'm referring to with the cursor? Uh, yes, sir. And that was a fairly large room as well, correct? Uh, 
Yes. And it had a bunch of um, site plans and, and uh, blueprints in that room. Isn't that what was in all of these shelving right here? Uh, yes, sir. You looked at those, right? Uh, I might have looked at the drawers. I don't remember actually going through each, uh, each plan. No, no, that, that's my point. You at least opened every drawer just to see what was in it, right? Um, yes. If I didn't do it, then somebody on the team did. So let's talk about the team. The goal was to go through every part of this house, right? Yes. And you were the person that made the decision whether to see something or not that day, correct? Correct. Other people had other assignments, right? Yes. And there was an overall supervisor there named, um, I think his name was Duva? Yes, sir. He was present. Yes. Sir. But his job was more to be like a supervisor for the whole team, right? Uh, correct. You were still the one making the decisions about what to see and what to leave, right? Uh, yes, as part of the team. Yes. The ultimate decision whether people would consult with you before something was, was actually taken as evidence, right? Yes. And you were working through um, like a court order or something, right? Uh, through a search warrant, sir. All right. And you were um, consulting with that, right? Uh, yes. Okay. The, um, if the, we don't have those images here, but if we continued through this opening here in the brick wall, you would then come to yet another room that was part of the office, correct? Uh, where that cursor is, yes, that's another room. And after that, you would come to what would be the, the main part of the house, right? Um, from what I remember, sir, the, the main part of the house is um, looking the opposite way. I see. So it was the red, the house was actually to the right of this image, is what you're saying, right? Uh, that's what I remember, yes. All right. So if I go to um, image two for a second, I just want to get this all clarified here. And um, I can't remember if this is the best. I guess it is the best view of the whole house from the from the front. The <clears throat> this part from approximately where this gray state police SUV is back to the right on the second floor was all part of the office, correct? Yes. And the house itself began just to the right of this. Uh, Shall we say the? Um, shall we say to the to the left of this same silver SUV, right? Um, yeah, approximately yes. And then continued all the way over to the very front where the headlights are of the state police van, right? Yes. And I note there are one, two, and three chimneys in this house, correct? Yes. As part of your job, did you also search the chimneys? Uh, not the chimneys, but... Uh, the hearths? I remember taking a look at the fireplaces, yes. All right. Was there more than one fireplace in this house? Uh, I really only remember one. The one in the living room? Uh, yes. Were you shown a picture of that today? I know that we've seen them from another day, but did you see one today in this uh, room? I don't believe so, sir. But you knew there was one in, like, a big family room or living room, right? Uh, yes. And you didn't see anything of any evidentiary value in there? No. And you were looking for even small scraps of paper and stuff, weren't you? Uh, yes. Anything that might help solve this missing person case, right? Yes. And that's why it took, I think, eight hours just at this location, right? Uh, approximately, yes. And one of the, off, I think it was Detective Pearson, uh, videotaped every room, right? Yes. Now, you've seen that video before, haven't you? Uh, a while ago, sir. Okay. Not today, in any of that, right? No. And that showed the whole house in from video from beginning to end, every room, right? Yes. 
And there was children's books in one room. Do you remember that? Um, I remember some bedrooms. Um, well, this house, it had, didn't it have eight bedrooms? Uh, yeah, there, there were a few, sir. Well, a few might be your average house. This was more like seven or eight, right? You don't have to know the exact amount, but my correct it was above the average number of bedrooms you'd find in, a, in, in an average house. Yes. And there were also, um, as I understand it, if I could just find my <coughs> notes, there were at least six full bathrooms in this house, weren't there? Uh, I'm not sure the exact number, sir. There were several, would you agree with that? Several, yes. And those were full baths with showers and bathtubs and whatnot, right? Uh, yes. And then there were still even more um, half baths, weren't there? A few half baths. There were a few half baths. And part of your job, or that of your team, was to check even for trace information in those areas, correct? Yes. So, like I asked you about 80 Mountain Spring, somebody went in and looked at the faucets, right? Yes. Looked in the drains, right? Yes. Maybe you didn't dismantle anything, but you checked to see if there was even the smallest chance there might be anything like that would test positive for um, a blood-like substance, right? Yes, sir. Even if it turned out to be a vegetable, like you still would check for it, right? Yes. And everything was negative in this house, right? For that, for those. Correct. Everything was negative. Now I'm just going to have you look um, for a minute at um, Exhibit 7. That is photograph 7 in the same uh, Fort Jefferson Crossing file. You recall you said you walked around the yard, is that right? Uh, yes. And you didn't see anything that looked disturbed, did you? Uh, no. And there was, a, there, was, there was an outdoor like grill area here, right? Uh, correct. And you walked around out there? Yes. You walked around this sort of covered uh, credenza area with a, like a porch, an open porch with these pillars? Yes, sir. And um, you remember there was um, firewood on the uh, porch there? Uh, I don't specifically remember the firewood, but... In any event, this was very close to where the fireplace that you were inspected was, wasn't it? Uh, yes. And you walked outside there as well as into the yard, correct? Uh, yes. It's fair to say you checked everything. Correct. Or your team did. Somebody on the team did, yes. You were also aware that dogs had been brought in to search the property as well, right? State police dogs. Uh, yes, I was aware of that. I'm not sure of when. But you know they were there maybe over the weekend before you got there? Uh, I don't remember. Sure. But you knew that was part of the investigation, right? Yes. And they were looking for trace evidence of somebody, right? Or something that would be relevant? They were uh, looking for what they were, what they were trained for. Now, I understand, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, there was also a state police helicopter involved in the search at one point? Uh, that I'm unaware of, sir. Okay. I'm also going to just ask you about a couple more of these pictures before I then
Um, I asked you about at 80 Mountain Spring, whether you looked at any, this is one of the pictures of uh, one of the garages, correct? Uh, yes. And um, we see on the garage floor, do you remember which garage side this was, by the way? This is the one closest to the house. Okay. Um, the garage floor has various um, stains and whatnot that we can see on the floor here. You see that? Yes. And then the same thing I'll show you with regard to the, um, I believe it's the other. And again, you see where I'm referring to, there's all these, uh, this, these stains on the floor here. Yes. Did you take samples of any of these stains that were on the garage floor? I did not. Did you use any kind of presumptive testing or reagent to see whether it had something that might be embedded in it? Uh, after visual inspection, um, if anything looks suspect, then I would uh, uh, do the presumptive test with the castle miner. All right, so did you believe that it was either oil or grease or something like that? Uh, that's what I remember it to be. And I'm just going to show you, um, that was picture 13. The same thing with now with picture 14. You see the, these stains. You observed them there that day, correct? On yes. The and these are the uh, other garages, the ones that are further away, the same garage? This is the same garage on the, uh, the house side. Right. And for the record, it's the one with the blue um, town of Farmington recycling bucket on the right side and the Farmington garbage receptacle also on the right side, right? Yes. This image. So let me just go back and like talk to you a little bit about the um, photocopies that you had seized and that you were trying to read some of it to us, some of it to us, right? Yes. They were in some kind of what looks like a computer bag, right? Yes. Did you seize the bag itself as well? No, I did not. It looked, was there a computer in it? Uh, no. But it was the kind of bag that you might put a, you know, I'm not going to use my, right? It was the kind of bag one could put a computer in, right? Yeah, it was approximately that size, sir. And you said that when you looked inside, you saw three separate photocopies, correct? Yes. And they, were, they weren't stapled together, were they? No. They weren't a folder, were they? No. You don't know when they'd been placed in that bag, did you? No. You didn't know uh, at that time even who had written them, right? Correct. Do you even know what order they were written in? Uh, no, I don't. Do you even know if they were, there were three separate sheets, right? Yes. One of them, I think you testified, looked like the uh, original one that had the pink line on the side, right? Yes. With changes though, right? The original had changes. Uh, yes. Did you, from that, conclude that the photocopy had been made before information had been added to it? Is that what uh, it looked like to you? Objection. Cause for well, speculation. There's been no, well, what the testimony has been today is that Detective Riley read what was shown to the jury. The court does not recall evidence that he read as he did today those entries when he sees them. So you may ask a foundational question. Of course, Your Honor. So if you recall, Ms. Manning asked you, after you tried to, you read what you could read that was legible from the photocopies, you were then asked to indicate what appeared to be an additional information on what looks like an original piece of paper, right? Yes. The one with the pink line on it. Yes. And that was all over to the right-hand side of it, uh, mostly, except at the very bottom. Yes. Right? And all those extra references, and I'll show it to you again if you want, 
all seem to have to do with somebody named Pavel, right? It's all said P-A-W-E-L, right? Yes. Those were the things that weren't on the photocopy that you found inside the black, uh, I'll call it a computer bag or handbag. Uh, that's correct. You don't know where the original of the other two photocopies went, do you? No. You don't know when the additional information was added to the original document. I don't know that. And just out of curiosity, because you know, at this time he was collecting evidence, did you know someone by the name at that point of Pavel Gumieni? Did you even know that name at that point? Um, I knew the name during the investigation. I don't know where along that, that investigative timeline where I learned it. And at the day you collected that evidence, you didn't know what uh, relationship a Pavel had to photos to us. Um, I don't remember when I learned about uh, Pavel. So you, you don't know. As you sit here today, there's no recollection as what you just said. Objection. Asked and answered. Well, the thrust of the testimony is that he does not remember when he learned <laughs> about either a relationship between Fotis Dulos and Gumieni, or when during the investigation he learned other information. That's how the court heard the testimony. By the way, when you um, search a home, you were, you were asked questions about whether 80 Mountain Spring appeared to be lived in. And your answer was it appeared no one was living there, right? That was your answer before? Yes. Did it appear that Ford Jefferson Crossing was lived in? Yes. Did you know who had been living there um, at the time? Uh, besides uh, Fotos Dulos? Right. Uh, no, specifically. Um, I don't remember seeing any mail or, or things like that. Do you know whether Michelle Traconis lived there? Uh, positively. I, I don't remember if we found anything that would lead us to believe that. Do you know if Michelle Traconis' daughter lived there? Uh, I don't remember, sir. And in, incidentally, do you recall when you get, went through this house seeing toys and other children's things in that house? Um, yes, there were children's items there. So you didn't see, what, what you didn't know at that point whether any children actually lived there though, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know, sir. And did you also have any information as you were searching as to whether any other family members or other people were staying there at the house? Uh, no. Just, um, I think I might be done. Let me just check my notes, please. By the way, when you were searching the vehicles at, at the, and, and taking note of the contents of the vehicles at the Litchfield um, uh, barracks, were you uh, already at that point made aware of who drove those vehicles and at what point? Um, no, again, I don't think uh, we knew at the time that we processed those vehicles where they kind of lined up in the timeline. So you don't also know who might have had access to them? Uh, that's correct. Were they all registered to the Ford group? Uh, I believe so. All th when I say all, I'm referring to the, was the Raptor registered to the Ford group? Yes. Was the Suburban registered to the Ford group? Yes. Was the white Jeep Cherokee registered to the Ford group? Uh, yes. I'll just have one moment, Your Honor. <coughs> No further questions, thank you.
they're redirecting. Uh, very brief, Your Honor. Detective Riley, just to be clear, the day you searched for Jefferson Crossing was what day? Uh, that was it was the third. Okay, June third. Uh, just going to backtrack just a little bit. You went to just to get the timeline down. You went to sixty nine Wells on May twenty fifth, correct? Uh, yes. And Attorney Showhorn asked you a couple questions on cross examination with respect to Fort Jefferson Crossing being seized or taken by the police on. 531, do you recall that line of question? Uh, yes. Okay, so between, just to get the time between 524 and 531, how many days is that? Uh, between 524. And 531 when Jefferson Crossing was seized by the police, how many days had passed? Uh, seven days. So for seven days that the police did not have access to that house um, after Jennifer Dulos had gone missing? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw your attention, if I can, a couple more questions. Do you recall Attorney Showhorn asking you some questions with respect to the Jeep Cherokee? And particularly the license plate that came out of the inventory search. Do you remember that line of questioning? Uh, yes, ma'am. And I believe you indicated you did not seize that license plate? Uh, correct. If I can just call it up. This is Office States 71, the file Mark Chevy Suburban. I just want to be clear, we're talking about the same thing, picture 12. Oh, I'm sorry, not Chevy Suburban, the Jeep Cherokee, picture 12. If you can take a look behind you, sir. Is that the license plate that you seized from the, or you took out of the vehicle and documented as part of the inventory search from the Jeep Cherokee? Uh, yes, it is. Did you see any adhesive tape altering that license plate that day? Objection, argumentative. Well, the question is not argumentative. The question is, did you see any adhesive tape altering that license plate on the day on which those items were laid out? Overruled. Did you, sir? Uh, no, ma'am. Now, I believe there's another photograph of it. On um, this state's 15, is that the same license plate or a different one? Uh, it's the same license, or it appears to be the same license plate. Okay. It is the same license plate, sorry. And again, no adhesive tape or any alterations on that license plate? Uh, no. And over here on the, that same photograph, there is the front right floor. What is that, sir? My cursor's over. Uh, it appears to be a screwdriver. Any blood-like stains on the screwdriver? Uh, not that we found. So these items that you took out of the Jeep Cherokee, sir, were just through the process of the inventory search. Was there any blood-like stains or anything of note to seize for evidentiary value at that time? Uh, no. I have nothing further, thank you. Just very briefly, um, did you note the license plate number on the Jeep Cherokee that was actually uh, on the Jeep at the time? Uh, not the memory, but we did uh, write it down on our report, sir. I'm going to show you photo three from that folder. You see the license plate that is displayed from photo three? Yes. And for the record, that is AK25389? Yes. What was the license plate that you were just shown by Ms. Manning a minute ago that was in the vehicle? Could you uh, show that picture to Absolutely. Me? Showing you what has been marked as Exhibit uh, 12 from this folder. AK25389, you see that? Yes. Is that the same number? Same plate. Same plate, same registration? Same registration number, yes. Thank you, no further questions. Nothing further, thank you. Thank you, Detective Riley, you may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> As the court understands, Attorney Manning, there are no other state's witnesses for today. Not for today, Your Honor. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we have concluded the testimony for today.
we do plan to start tomorrow uh, at 10 o'clock. So thank you for your attention. We ask that you not discuss the case, not take in any media reports about the case, and we plan to see you tomorrow. We're not, adjour we're not adjourning yet. Did you have uh, a matter yes, you Judge, want to bring to the court's attention? I did just want to um, alert the court to the discussion that I had with Attorney Schoenhorn yesterday because it relates to a motion in Lemonade that was filed by the defense in this case. So we do anticipate that Detective John, or former retired Detective John Kimball, is going to be testifying tomorrow with respect to. Um, certainly at least the defendant's first statement and possibly the second statement as well, um, depending on how far we get um, during the course of the day. Now, Attorney Schoenhorn had filed a motion in limine on January 10th to preclude reference to the defendant's assertion of her Miranda rights, including a request for presence of counsel. So um, I spoke with Attorney Schoenhorn, and I think we have an agreement on how we're going to do this, which is satisfactory to both parties, which is, um, I'm going to ask Detective Kimball whether or not he had spoken with the defendant in the late evening hours of June 1st or, or the morning of June 2nd. Yes. And were arrangements made for her attorney to come to the police department the next day? Yes. Who was that? Andrew Bowman. And then we're going to really just pick up the first interview from the moment that attorney Bowman is in the courtroom. And it's our intention to play that interview from that point in its entirety and then play the second interview in its entirety when we get there as well. So I just wanted to put that on the record. Um, and so if there's any concerns about any of that, I just wanted that to, to be raised now. No, th that was my understanding. I think the, I, I'm sure Mr. McGinnis just misspoke when he said that Attorney Bowman in the courtroom, I think he meant at the police station. Oh, well, we've been spending a lot of time there, so. <laughs> yeah, so. But, uh, um, but other yeah. than that, he is correct in our uh, agreement as to how we're gonna proceed. Is Detective Kimball the first witness? He is, Judge. He's office, he's not <coughs> Officer Kimball, he's a police, Westport police officer. <coughs> and so how many witnesses are lined up for tomorrow? So if we, I, I anticipate the first interview, Your Honor, is approximately two hours and 45 minutes, right. even from the moment that I'm referring to. Right. Um, and so currently we just have Detective Kimball lined up and then I guess we're going to see where it goes if we get to the second interview. That interview in its entirety is um, I think three hours and 30 minutes or thereabouts. So Detective Kimball, the court remembers, was involved in both, correct? He, yes, there's actually a third interview but that's going to be played later in the right. trial. But yes, Detective Kimball was present for all three. Okay, thank you. Um, do you need time tomorrow to make sure the video setup is going to be accurate and nothing comes through that shouldn't come through? So I, I plan on um, clipping out the video tonight and creating a DVD which would eliminate you know any portion um, in advance of Mr. Bowman's you know arrival at the police department. I think it picks up with Detective Flabby and the defendant in the room. So from that point forward, I think Attorney Schoenhorn knows what I'm referring to because it's basically when the camera goes on in the afternoon, that's what we intend on playing. Um, I did just want to indicate one additional thing for the record, which is I'm doing this, Your Honor, but it, again, I reserve the right if I believe the defense has opened the door in some way to the invocation of the right to counsel to per perhaps introduce evidence of those invocations, depending on where it goes, but I told Attorney Schoenhorn that I would do that outside the presence of the jury because I understand that there would be an objection. So I just wanted to put everyone on notice of that. I just would go further, Your Honor. I would note that, as I understand the case law, if the state at any time elicits the fact that a person exercised their rights under the, under the Fifth or the Sixth Amendment to remain silent, that that is basically a structural error in a trial which almost always leads to reversal. So I assume that the state would not want to jeopardize whatever they're doing 
by bringing in something that the Supreme Court of the United States has said it's, it's an error of the most extreme, uh, it's structural defect in a trial. So Doyle versus Ohio is the, is the case. I don't object to um, um, the reading of the rights, to having Attorney Bowman be there, or even the fact that they've arranged to have her lawyer there to start. But you know, to suggest that that opens the door, you know, I, you know, I'm, it would have to be a pretty wide barn door for that to happen. Let's put it that way. So I, I didn't suggest any of that open the door. In fact, I'm suggesting the opposite. What I am suggesting, however, is that depending on the line of cross-examination. So for example, if there's some claim of a language barrier or something of that nature, the fact that she understood her Miranda rights tends to rebut any claim that she didn't understand what was going on. So I guess we're gonna see where it goes. He's incorrect when he says that our case law categorically bars indications, that's untrue. And I'll get the court the cases that say that. I believe the seminal case is State versus Cabral or something like that. It's a 2005 case from our Supreme Court. Doyle versus Ohio actually doesn't have any applicability here because that refers to commenting on post-Miranda silence. And here she actually spoke with the police. So we're actually talking about apples and oranges. But this, Your Honor, will hopefully just be academic because um, we're going to see where it goes. There is another matter that the court will first talk to counsel about at sidebar concerning the video, and the court knows that on a previous occasion, this issue was contested. Uh, and after our discussion at sidebar, the court will, if it thinks it is necessary, uh, put certain matters on the record. So yes, the counsel would approach. The court just discussed with counsel uh, certain uh, segments of the video that may uh, have caused uh, concern, and it has been represented that that segment is not going to be offered. Uh, we'll stand adjourned until tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Thank you. All right.